Johnny Deller. Al Turner, Johnny, over here at New Britain Mutual. Al, it's been a long time. Yeah, I know. What can I do for you? Plenty, I hope. Uh, how, uh, how old are you, Johnny? Well, next birthday I'll be 30... Huh? 30 what? Now, why? Well, it really doesn't make too much difference. You see, Johnny, I think it's time you entered a home for the age. I what? And if you think I'm kidding, I'm not. Okay, Al, what's the gag? I told you, I want you over at the Mackley Rest Home. Where's that? Frog Mountain, New York. Where's that? Down along the Hudson River above Poughkeepsie near Kingston. But, uh, just to pay him a little visit, not to stay. That's right. What goes down there? Sudden death, Johnny. Deaths. Oh? Four of them in a row, three of them insured by us. Well, after all, if they're old folks... That's the beneficiary of all that insurance. Yeah? The sole beneficiary of all the insurance on them just happens to be the Mackley Rest Home. Oh. Yeah. Okay, well, I'll, uh, kind of drop in on them. CBS Radio brings you Bob Bailey in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the New Britain Mutual Insurance Company, Home Office, Hartford, Connecticut. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the Paradise Lost matter. I decided my own car would be handy to have along. As usual, the gauge said nearly empty. So, expense account item one is five twenty for a tank full of gas. I drove west on 44, then cut across to Rhinebeck, then Rhine Cliff, where I took the ferry over the Hudson to the town of Kingston, New York. On Route 28, I passed through Stony Hollow, and a few miles further on, I found a sign indicating Frog Mountain. It was on a side road to the left. At one side of it overlooked the famous Ashokan Reservoir, and I, uh, well, some pretty big fish have come out of that water. Thinking about it, I almost drove on past what was obviously a rest home for the agent, in among the trees. There was a large, very old frame house set on the side of the mountain. And sitting about on the front lawn, reading, chatting, playing cards, or just enjoying the afternoon sun were the happy-looking customers. As I stopped the car, a pleasant-looking middle-aged man walked over to me, smiled, and said... How do you do, young man? How do you do? Oh, how do you do? My name is Johnny Dollar. A pleasure to meet you, Mr. Dollar. I'm Justin Perry. Uh, Perry? You have some elderly relative, perhaps very dear to you, for whom you'd like to provide a quiet, comfortable retirement home. Well, uh, no. Oh, Justin Perry, I'm the owner of Paradise. Paradise? A really appropriate name for our lovely place, don't you agree? Well, uh, yes. Just look at the happy faces of our guests and you can... But then you say you don't wish to send someone to us. Well, now, wait. Uh, This isn't the Mackley Rest Home? Oh, no, no, Mr. Dollar. This is Paradise. The Mackley place is further up the road. Oh, 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 I see, I see. Well, thanks very much. A dollar, did you say? Yes, that's right. Edward? Edward? Yes, Dad? Would you like to show Mr. Dollar the way to the Mackley place? Sure, Dad. Anything you say. Then go ahead. Well, if it's just up the road. About a mile or so. Oh, then I'm sure I'll be able to find it all right. Whatever you say, Mr. Dollar. Sure. Thanks a lot. A very nice spot. And some of the folks on the lawn waved cheerily as they drove on back up the road toward the mountain. I wondered if the Mackley place would be the same. It wasn't. At least, well, it was brand new, a modern ranch type of thing built on a single level. A lot of native stone and glass, all very pretty and smart and practical, but lacking in warmth. The guests, the residents, though well-dressed and apparently wealthy, were sitting by themselves for the most part, reading or just, just sitting. No one seemed to notice me as I parked my car, then walked in through the door at one side, marked off. Yes. Something I can do for you? Mr. Mackley? Yes, that's right. Peter Mackley. And uh, who are you? My name is Johnny Dollar. Oh, yes, yes. The insurance investigator. How are you? I am. Uh, Al Turner at the insurance company said you'd be coming along. Uh, won't you sit down? Oh, he did? Yes. Just to be honest about it, I, I don't see why, though. You don't, huh? Well, now, what do you mean by that, Mr. Dollar? Well, it's quite a layout you have here, Mr. Mackley. Must have set you back a lot of money. Well, that's no secret. But I suppose it's all bought and paid for. Oh, no, far from it, Mr. Dollar. It'll be some years before we get our heads above water. 
Even with the help of two or three nice, fat insurance legacies? Now, look here, Dollar. I... Well? If you're referring to the fact that some people happened to die and just happened to leave some insurance to us... Just happened to, huh? Now, what's that mean? Just exactly what you think it does, Mackley. Are you trying to imply that I or anybody if else... If the shoe fits where it... Now, if you're saying that you suspect we might have murdered those old Did people... Did I say that? Well, that's what you meant, isn't it? You've no right coming here accusing me of something like that. Now, look, you... What's more, you're not the police, and you have no authority around here. So just go on, get out of here. Sorry, but I'm not leaving this place until I find out something more about how those people died. Dollar, you're going to be sorry for this. Is that a threat? You take it any way you like. Well, it may sound a bit corny, Mackley. Now just get out of here. just remember that anything you say now might be used against you. Why, you arrogant fool! And now, Act Two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar and the Paradise Lost Matter. All right. All right, Mr. Dollar. I I freely admit it was too bad that four of the old people died here within a month and a half. It's most pathetic, most unexpected. What's more important to me is that it gives our place a black eye. Unexpected by whom, Mr. Mackley? By everyone. Including the doctor who comes up here from Kingston to attend them, and who is always on call in case of emergency. Uh-huh. Who is this doctor? He's Dr. Nathan Way. He's from over in Kingston. Just how did these four people die? Well, according to their death certificates, the first one was an accident. Old Mr. Bartley slipped and fell off the corner of the porch one night while he was walking in his sleep. Slipped or was pushed? Now, look here, Dollar. Okay, not... okay. What about the other three? They were natural causes. That is, they... Well, their hearts gave out. According to the death certificates. That's right. But what really happened? Poison, perhaps? Something like that? Dollar. Dollar, you don't know what you're talking about. We'll see, Mr. McElroy. Now, where will I find this Dr. Way? Uh, someone mentioned my name? Oh, hello, Dr. Hello, Peter. Doctor, this is Johnny Dollar. He's oh. an investigator from the insurance company. How do you do, Mr. Dollar? Doctor. Dollar seems to have the absurd, the fantastic idea that the recent deaths here were deliberate. What? Yes. What? Yes, in order that we could benefit from the insurance, those, those fine old people were kind enough to leave us. Well, now, that is rather absurd, Mr. Dollar. Is it, Doctor? This place is up to its neck in debt. I it? told you that, Dollar. But isn't that to be expected when you consider the cost of building a fine new establishment like this? All right. After all, it's less than two years old. And what did you do before this, Mackley? In some business where you could go around making contacts that would assure you plenty of wealthy, gullible customers for this racket? Dollar. Well? Dollar. My wife and I have been in this business of taking care of old people ever since my parents died. That's over 15 years ago. Yeah, where? In Pennsylvania. I can check on that, you know. I know that, I know that. Why did you pack up and come here to New York? Tell him, Peter. Well, well, for one thing, the air. The climate is much better here than it was in the coal region. Yes. And? Tell him, Peter. Well, we had to close down over there. Why? Because our building, our... Our facilities were considered substandard, according to some new regulations. And suddenly, a lot of your patients started dying off? No! No, now that nothing of the sort. Peter is telling you the truth, Mr. Dollar. You investigated, Dr. Way? Well, no, not exactly. I see. But I have talked with many of these fine old people who moved from there to here, and they are intelligent, wealthy people. Wealthy? Yes, yeah, I'll bet they are. Dollar, will you listen to me? And it was so easy to talk a lot of them into buying a hunk of insurance and making this place the beneficiary. Now, that's not true. Isn't it? Then how come three of the four no, people who no, suddenly died around here... No, it isn't true, Mr. Dollar. It was I who suggested to them, unknown to Peter, that they leave something to this rest home. You? And they thanked me and wondered why they hadn't thought of it before. How many of your people are planning to leave you money, Mackley? I don't know, Dollar. I don't know if any of them are, and what's more, I don't care. My wife and I knew the financial responsibility we were taking on in the beginning. And unless we lose our reputation, our clientele, through more of these unfortunate deaths... Oh, sure, they're bad for business, aren't they? Yes, yes, they exactly, are. Exactly, Mr. Dollar. But as long as the insurance money keeps... Dollar, running, will you stop it? No. Now, Dr. Way. Uh, Mr. Dollar, I'm afraid these accusations... Tell yours... me this, Doctor. 
You issued the death certificate, huh? Uh, I did, for all of them. You made autopsies on them all, huh? Well, good heavens, no. Why not? Uh, The accident in case of Mr. Bartley was all too obviously an accident. Was it? As for the others, well, after all, they were well along in years. Oh, so you gave them a quick once-over, scribbled down natural causes, and let it go at that. And that's why I want those bodies exhumed and autopsies performed. Mr. Tahoe. First, though, I'm checking up on you. Well, by all means, do. I want you to. Oh, I will. Meantime, if you like, I'll drive back to Kingston and arrange for the bodies to be made available. Yeah, you do that. I followed the doctor into Kingston, parked my stuff at a hotel, and dropped in at police headquarters where I talked with Lieutenant Art Connolly. A dollar, I'm glad you're looking into this. Frog Mountain's a bit out of our jurisdiction, officially, that is. But I've wondered about those deaths myself. Well, how much do you know about Peter Mackley, Lieutenant? Well, I've thought a lot of that man ever since he came to these parts. Oh? Yeah, he's not the kind you might expect to be running an old folks' home, but, well, he's okay. I see. How well do you know Dr. Way? Well, one of the finest people we have here in Kingston. And without a doubt, the best man to make those autopsies you want. He's connected with the department? Yeah. And if you ask me, he'll get you results so fast it'll... Oh, now, wait a minute, Dollar. You're not thinking that Dr. Wade... Mackley. Mackley, huh? And I'll tell you this about Pete Mackley, Dollar. It took a lot of guts for him to go to that place of his. What do you mean by that? I mean against some of the folks around town who were partial to Justin Perry, who runs the Paradise Home, who, who were afraid it might put him out of business. Mackley's place being so much nicer and modern and all. That still doesn't mean anything, Lieutenant. And you know, those old folks like things new and modern. And if Perry doesn't improve that place of his... Oh, uh, yeah? Oh, hello, Doc. Lieutenant, Mr. Dollar, I'll be able to make those autopsies tonight. When I'm finished, I'll uh, call you at your hotel. Sure, Doctor. You do that. I talked further with the Lieutenant, but I'm afraid I didn't get much help from him. He was convinced, a little too convinced, that Peter Mackley was all right. And he spent all his time defending him. A late dinner at the hotel was item two, four twenty-five. Item three was thirty-five cents for a magazine. I went up to my room, sprawled out in a big overstuffed chair, put my feet on the windowsill, and promptly went to sleep. Yeah, the combination of a big dinner and the quiet night had really got to me. Too much for my own good. He must have used a calling card to slip the lock on the door, because the first thing I remember was hearing the door close. And when the light switch went off... Huh? Who's that? What's the idea of turning off the... Oh, no, you... And now, Act Three of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Another piece of tape to hold this bandage on your head, and you'll be... Doctor. Yeah, there you are. That's Back right. away. Now, don't tell me you fell asleep and fell out of your chair and did this. Oh, no, no, listen. Oh, listen. and here, here. Perhaps a drop of this uh, medicinal brandy? No, no. Yeah. Oh, yeah, thanks. Oh, oh. Hey... Hey, look, it's morning. Yes, and I've done the autopsies. Oh? I knocked on your door and didn't get any answer. Doc, listen. But it wasn't locked, so I came on in, and uh, what happened? Oh, somebody sneaked in and slugged me. Who? Are you kidding? But come on, what about the autopsies? Yes, yes. Well, no question about it. Uh, Mr. Bartley's death was an accident. But the others? Poison. A poison that made it look like heart failure. Okay, then. Hello. Hello. Your order, please? Lieutenant Art Conley at police headquarters. I'll call you right back, sir. Emergency operator. This is a... Okay, okay. Hey, now, Mr. Dollar. The doctor, somebody at Mackley's rest home gave them poison. So that's it. But... The only medicines those people get are the ones that I myself prescribe. 
and I have never prescribed even the most minute dose of sodium therapy. Lieutenant Johnny Dollar. Well, I'm glad you called, Dollar. The doc told me the result of his autopsy is on his way over to see you. Then you know. But I still refuse to believe that Peter Mackley... No. Is... Then why did he come here and try to put me out of the picture? He... What? I don't know what scared him off before he could finish the job, but I'm thankful something did. When? Last night I was asleep. Oh, well, then you're wrong. It wasn't Peter Mackley. No. Knowing that sometimes you have to suspect even your best friend on a case like this, I had Mackley here at headquarters all night. So, Dollar... Doctor... My prescriptions? Yes. I've been thinking about that. They're always made up at Pearson's Drugstore by Mrs. Pearson herself. Then she is going to have some visitors. What? Come along, Doc. Mrs. Pearson, this is Johnny Dollar, special investigator. Oh, how exciting. Mrs. Pearson, I want to know if you stock a drug called sodium thera... What do you call it, Doctor? I didn't, but it's sodium thera melisolate. Oh. But I doubt very much Yes, I do. You do? Old Dr. Morley, the veterinarian, used it now and then to take care of hopeless animal cases. And you have it here now? Yes, one of these back shells. I have a single bottle that I... Hey, wait. Wait a minute. Yes? On that motorcycle out there with a the sidecar. He pulled away from in back of this place. Yes. He helps in the store and makes all the deliveries for me. And he must have seen us in here. Must have seen me. What? He makes all the deliveries, including prescriptions for the Mackley Rest Home? That's right. Doc. He's taking some of Dr. Way's prescriptions up there now. Good. No, no, listen. Now, let me find that bottle of... Doc, sodium. doctor, listen. That may be the answer. That he's the delivery boy for Mrs. Pearson? Yes. Well, I'm afraid I Dr. don't... Dr. Way, look here. No, no, Doc, we've got to go after that kid. Here's the bottle, doctor. Uh, but I don't understand. Doctor, will you listen to me? So many of them are missing. Unless we could... What was that, Mrs. Pearson? Well, a lot of these sodium theramalicillate tablets are missing. And that's the answer, Doc. He's the answer. Come on. Have you ever tried to chase a motorcycle up a tortuous, treacherous mountain road? Well, I did. We did. And the sidecar was the only thing that kept him from running away from us. And the fact that he kept looking back, knowing we were chasing him. No, he'll kill him, sir. Looking back at us. That was his big mistake. He'll never make that turn. That was young Edward Perry's fatal mistake. Ed. Edward. He's still alive, Doc. Here. Yeah. Here, I'll see what I can do for him. Now, now, Ed. Now, let's, let's see. You know, take it easy here. No, no use, Doc. <laughs> well, we can try now. We can try. But but why, Eddie? I uh, saw you there in the store. I uh, saw Dollar there. All right, just take it easy. Ed. Knew you'd got wise that I was in. I was putting that poison in Doc's prescription. Uh, Give him something to knock him out, Doctor. Uh, well, I'm afraid there's no use. I'm afraid... Uh, but it was Dad who... Justin Perry. Dad made me. Said if enough... Enough people at Mackley's died off, they'd... Uh, now, easy, easy, lad. Easy. Uh, they'd leave Mackley's. Come to Dad's place. Eddie, why? To the paradise. We'd put... We'd put... Mackley, out of business. Barry's arm, Dollar. Right, Doc. Uh, what? Put Mackley out of... Uh, so... So long, Doc. Doctor. It's all over. Mm-hmm. Oh, I don't know. I don't know what the courts will do. Ask me, Justin Perry murdered his son as much as though he'd done it with his own two... Uh, I don't know. Expense account total, 
Call it 50 bucks. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, originates in Hollywood and is written, produced, and directed by Jack Johnstone. Heard in our cast were Virginia Gregg, Harry Bartell, Edgar Barrier, Sam Edwards, Stacey Harris, Junius Matthews, and Forrest Lewis. Be sure to join us next week, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is John Wall speaking. Johnny Dollar has come to you through the worldwide facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.